Great, thanks very much, and thanks everyone for attending today. Um, the topic, I believe, has been suggested by uh, members, and really this is going to be an update uh, on the workplace, especially focused on um, contact center users. Uh, again, I'm Brad Black. Uh, I'm leading a, um, a team in product management that's focused on UC and CC uh, client applications at Avaya. Uh, and uh, in today's session, um, <clears throat> I will show a little bit of roadmap content. And generally, when we talk about forward-looking, uh, you know, <clears throat> roadmap uh, items, uh, it is subject to change in terms of content and schedule. So keep that in mind. And um, the best way to just keep keep in close touch with, you know, Avaya and your your Avaya partners and, and account teams to make sure you have the latest information. Uh, so here's the web the web webinar abstract. Uh, basically, I, I'd like to give an update, uh, an overview of Workplace for Windows, focusing um, a little bit more on the Avaya Contact Center Elite solutions that we've built up over the past years, uh, give an update on the user experience and the features that we have, and also talk about the, difference, the differences between various Avaya client applications and so solutions for supporting you know, customer experience and contact center. Uh, and I'd also like to spend a bit of time talking about best practices for deployment and then talk about, uh, you know, uh, roadmap in terms of what we're doing in terms of future releases. Um, so, okay, let's uh, let's jump in from, from there. Um, now, before I, I get into, um, you know, too much detail about Workplace, I kind of want to give you a sense of the portfolio and the bigger picture. Uh, this is kind of a view of our, uh, what I would call our go forward applications that we're investing in, and they really fall into two different categories. Uh, on the left is Workplace for both a desktop and, and mobile, and we do support contact center um, elite solutions natively on Workplace for Windows, Workplace for Android, and Workplace for iOS. Um, and uh, before I guess before it comes up, I'll mention that we are aware of um, you know interest in having the features on the Mac. It's something that we're looking into, but it's not currently planned um, in, in the short term for an upcoming release. These are basically solutions that um, provide a voice contact center um, capability. And in, I want to mention that in the past, Avaya would build uh, independent applications for UC, for general enterprise calling and for contact center. So many of you may know about applications like One X Agent or Avaya Agent for desktop. And those applications are very widely used in our customer base. And we have many customers that have, you know, thousands and thousands or tens of thousands of agents using those applications. So they're very popular. Um, but uh, for both those applications that I mentioned, they're basically uh, moving into a sustain uh, or have moved into a sustaining mode where they're getting, you know, fixes and, and updates, but they're not getting um, a, you know, active, actively developed new features. The, uh, the strategy from Avaya is really to converge those type of applications into one application with Workplace that provides the comprehensive contact center features as well as the calling features, the UC features. So, you know, you may be aware of telephony features like bridge line appearances or team buttons or things like that. So when you get deep into those, you know, UC features, um, the other applications like One X Agent and Agent for Desktop didn't really support those. Workplace started from an enterprise calling perspective, and then we've built on the voice contact center elite feature set. So I'll go into detail on that, but I wanted to give you that positioning that that's one style of application. It's very popular with our customer base to have a voice centric contact center. Uh, and um, so we do support that. On the right hand side, we have uh, more of a next gen or um, you know stronger capability set for customers that want to use a web based desktop. Um, and then ha take advantage of going beyond voice to support digital channels like chat, email, and social channels, have additional flexible uh, web-based widgets that can be added to the experience in the browser um, to provide features like uh, outbound calling uh, assist, uh, customer journey, um, and, and so on and so forth. So a very powerful solution uh, that extends beyond just voice uh, with uh, with uh, applications like Workspaces, Workspaces for Elite, Oceana, and of course our our next gen experience platform solution, uh, which is our, our, our complete cloud-based contact center solution. Um, and so depending on the, the particular backend that you're working with with those applications, uh, you may have uh, it working with a desk phone or an application like Workplace for audio, or you may have WebRTC within the browser. And so that's, a, a um, kind of exciting because you can basically deploy the browser-based application and have everything working in the browser, including the voice um, or, or audio and video, which is great. Um, 
In addition to Avaya's own workspaces application, um, the web-based desktop, we have the ability to embed those capabilities inside of other uh, vendors' uh, solutions like Salesforce, uh, ServiceNow, and Microsoft Dynamics. So again, this is another part of our strategy that for some customers or teams, uh, they really want to be using those applications and then have the contact center feature set, including all of the agent capability uh, and even going, going so far as the di digital channels embedded within uh, those solutions. So we do support that. So again, at a high level, that's kind of, I think it's, I hope it's clear that there's kind of a traditional voice of focused or core voice uh, contact center solution. We've added mobile, which is new. And then of course we have for customers that want to take it to the next step in terms of much more capability, including web extensibility and adv take advantage of a web-based solution. We have those solutions like workspace, workspaces and workspaces for, uh, for CRM, for example, and our uh, Avaya experience platform cloud solution. All right, so Workplace has, you know, uh, it certainly evolved over the years, uh, and it, one of the one of the hallmarks of work, Workplace is that it's it's a very adaptable application, right? So it can be as simple as a soft phone. Uh, it can be um, you can add features, you know, one by one, you know, things like video calling, uh, instant messaging, presence, um, directory, uh, you know, contacts, um, and including a full a full meeting solution, and now the the contact center elite uh, capability. So when you deploy this, you can now deploy a single app uh, and it can adapt for your users that just need basic calling or advanced calling, um, access to their calendar to click to dial into meetings, um, and then the agent functionality as well. So, and it opens up possibilities too, right? You're de deploying and managing a single app. The configuration is based on the user role and then you've actually got that app out there. So that if you do have a set of users that might be able to participate in helping with customer service at a peak peak time of demand, uh, if that makes sense for you, um, they would already have the application and it's just a matter of enabling the features the features that they, they need to use. So that's a kind of a new possibility when you, the users are already using the app and you're just enabling features as opposed to talking about using a different application. Okay, so just a view here for those of you that haven't seen it, this is kind of the latest view of a workplace for Windows with the agent bar. The agent bar is kind of a user interface element that when you're logged in as an agent will show with your controls to do things like move into the ready state to take calls, not ready if you need to go to a meeting or take a break, um, or after co contact work if you need to do um, um, you know, some note taking or things like that after a call. So this is kind of our one, one touch, one click, very visible and very uh, visual way to access the features. And it's very similar between the mobile apps as well as the Windows app. Um, giving you kind of one touch access to um, <clears throat> different things. Now you'll see later, I'll show you the button module. The button module is um, much like <clears throat> a software version of an expansion module on a desk phone. And, and some features uh, may be ac accessible or accessed from the button module, but for the most case, 95% um, of what an agent would need to do uh, during their shift or their workday would be available from, from within the agent bar here. And maybe I'll just point out that at the at the lower right, you're seeing a view of Q stats. And so even when you're not logged in as an agent, you can see Q statistics and uh, as well as um, view stats. So we have Q stats and view stats providing different um, visibility into what's going on in terms of the Q, including thresholds, you know, to turn the icons red here in terms of wait time in Q, number of, uh, number of people waiting in the Q and so on. I'll talk a bit more about that later. All right, and so uh, I won't spend too much time on this, but I you know, definitely want to note that uh, over the years, we've taken Workplace um, as a SIP application, a SIP client, and really built up the, the depth of the telephony features. So I'll show you some slides later on, make these slides available to you with kind of the set of features that we've added over the over the months and years. But you can see that really ev pretty much everything that you can do with a desk on a via desk phone, you can now do with Workplace, including advanced uh, enterprise voice calling features, um, um, that, that you would expect. And some of the recent enhancements, uh, I'll talk about the contact center elite support, basically giving you full voice agent support, um, state state timers, uh, right on the right on the agent bar, uh, queue stats and view stats, service observe, agent greetings and screen pops. We'll talk about that. 
We've also added visual voicemail for Avaya messaging. So this is available on desktop and mobile so that you can see your voicemails visually in a list. Um, you know, click to play, delete them, um, call back the user and so on. We've added a one-touch recording feature um, so that um, um, outside of traditional co contact center recording and call recording, it's a very it's a simple way that you can enable a user to have a, a record button that would basically record a call and place it into their uh, voicemail box. Uh, we've added video tutorials on desktop and mobile, custom ringtones so you can have um, based on the type of call, internal, external, bridge line appearance, group pickup call, agent call, you can have a different um, a different ringtone. And we've added this simplified home screen home screen layout. So although we have a calendar and the top of mind for people that want to have that capability, as you start to limit the functions and if you make it simpler, then it gets to the point where it just makes a lot of sense just to have this simple kind of um, dial pad layout for the home screen as you see on the screenshot here. Uh, one of the other uses of Workplace uh, is as a media client. Uh, and that's where that simplified home screen also comes into play is that if you're using solutions like Workspaces for Elite, uh, where you need to have a media client to handle the calls and you, you, you choose not to use WebRTC, um, then you know you can use Workplace. And we would actually recommend it for our different solutions as well as for third-party solutions and, and customer uh, custom-developed uh, agent desktops that use CTI and third-party call control to, to control another application for voice. And I'll also mention just briefly that we do have solutions for Chromebooks. Uh, we see some customers using these where in combination with the virtual desktop, for example, they may, may be using uh, Workplace, uh, the Android version of Workplace from the, the Google Play Store. Um, in case you didn't know, the Chromebooks are able to run Android applications. So we've modified our Android smartphone application to have a customized look and feel on a Chromebook where it can run in a window and it can also have a few other uh, things that take advantage of the uh, of the Chromebook um, system. Okay, so next, let me talk about uh, again the motivation. Some of you, you know, may may have seen this before, but um, we basically, um, you know, had the, the you know request from customers about bringing together both UC and CC into the same application. Um, and first. Uh, First, we were worked on this for mobile to basically create a new set of use cases for mobile users that could take advantage of uh, contact center capabilities. Uh, um, maybe they're not, not even traditional agents. Uh, we had, you know, scenarios from an insurance or sales and so on where these users could basically be um, uh, take advantage of. Uh, you could take advantage of the the analytics and measurement dashboards and things like that that you can have with the contact center features where you're really taking calls. Um, you know routing calls uh, and 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 having the analytics around what happened with the, with the disposition of the call uh, rerouting calls and so on and so forth so um but, an, but another part of this is basically make, building a single app that has all of the uc features that you'd expect from avaya with the contacts and early feature set right in the same application so um you know that's helped us to converge the portfolio i mentioned we've got those other applications out there like one x agent and agent for desktop i'll explain later how um um, they compare the different applications compare uh, and I mentioned that the other apps are kind of in a, in a sustaining mode um, uh, and so maybe let me just say a word now that um, you know it we would encourage new deployments to be looking at workplace for for contact center elite if you're looking for a voice application like this um, some of our customers are starting to look as they move to sip uh, as they move to cloud solutions uh, about transitioning to workplace um, but for the most part, there's no there's no short-term trigger that's really forcing any any change away from those apps. But I would encourage you to look at sort of the benefits of Workplace um, as something that um, in the longer term I think would make sense to uh, to understand as part of the evolution and, and your sort of technology refresh of your um, of your desktops. Okay, so let me move move on here. Uh, and so now we're focusing a little bit on the mobile. This is the mobile experience you can see with the top of mind screen with the calendar and and so on. Uh, we have um, we have uh, the agent bar again. So um, very simple uh, controls. Um, you have agent login and logout, uh, state control and status for the agent. All the things you'd expect to be able to do. Um, we can keep this, the app on the screen and the device unlocked as long as you're plugged into power. If you, if you want to work that way, uh, we've got features that would redirect on different types of network failure or if the user doesn't answer for some reason. You know, quite important with a mobile 
device, for example, and then change the agent state to not ready and redirect that call just to another agent that can handle that call. Uh, and then we do support skills, and I think I have a screenshot of that, basically where the agent can uh, uh, change their skills if they if they need to. So again, uh, kind of a simple um, tutorial here for on the mobile about the customer service agent bar. Um, you can see that when you disable customer service or log out uh, as an agent, you have your disposition codes here. You can provide a reason by using the menu. Um, you can capture a work code at the end of a call uh, using uh, predefined work codes or custom work codes. Uh, very simple, you know, very, you know, one touch, very vi visual and very easy to use. Um, you can uh, preset your next state. Uh, so these are all things that you'd really expect to do. We've just built it into a, a very simple, uh, nice to use interface. And basically everything I'm showing you here on mobile is uh, translated over to the Windows app as well. And again, if you choose to let uh, agents uh, change their skills by provisioning with the change skill button, then they can opt in, in or out of one or more skills. If you don't give them that ability to change their skills, uh, then they'll just see the skills that they're basically provisioned for, uh, um, uh, just to just to provide a confirmation of that. Turning our, our attention over to Windows now, we actually have a superset of the features on the Windows platform. Uh, so as you'd expect, agent login and log out, uh, all the state control stuff. You can see here that I'm showing the button module, which is you can use the button module for all these features, just like on a phone, the feature buttons appear on the button module. Uh, but you don't have to use that uh, when you're using the agent bar for the most commonly used features. Um, we have service observing, which is typically used by supervisors or coaches to listen into calls, um, you know, coach, provide a coach to the a guidance to the agent or actually listen and talk to both the agent and the caller. So all those are available uh, from the button module. You can see there's a menu when you're on the call to change the, the mode of, of, of service observing from, for example, here from listen only to talk and listen. Um, and we have added a, a, another feature I'll talk about later to basically, rather than having to enter in an agent number when you in, invoke service observe, to be able to do this from a, a contact, like a search or a, a contact in your contact list. Um, we also have uh, queue stats and, and view stats. We'll show those later. Uh, supervisor assist to reach out to a supervisor during a call. We have customizable agent greetings. I'll uh, talk a, a, a fair bit about those and how those have been enhanced and customizable screen pops as well. And finally, I would say that we've spent, you know, a good bit of time on 508 compliance, making workplace for Windows especially a really good application for blind and visually impaired people with support for screen readers, uh, keyboard shortcuts, uh, keyboard navigation. Uh, and so we've had really good feedback from our customers about, um, you know, using this app for those, those users. Okay, here's a better look at the button module. So again, I've got kind of my agents logged in. I've got, you notice I've got agents here in my 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 group, my contact group, and I can actually see their their states. Like I can see that Steven is actually on an agent call, um, um, you know, and, and that Steven is in a not ready status. He's in a meeting. So I actually see the agent states and their dispositions from the those call codes actually in the presence for the contacts. I've got my button module, which can be attached or docked to the application. It can be undocked and it can stretch out uh, from using just a simple one panel view here with the 24 buttons uh, to stretch out to actually three different complete um, uh, expansion modules. So you could stretch it out and have visibility to 96, uh, 96 buttons all on the screen at once if you wanted to. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through a few things that we've added recently to uh, to Workplace in terms of features. So we did start with a, a, gr a greeting type that was basically automatic, uh, greetings that were um, um, auto, you know, for auto answer or tied to a, a VDN. Uh, we've now added um, number ind ind identification, so you can tie a greeting uh, that you, you record in your own voice. Uh, you can uh, basically tie that to an incoming call uh, number. So again, I should mention that greetings and screen pops are not tied to the agent features or the agent licensing. Um, they're actually available to anyone. So anyone can take advantage of greetings or the screen pop features here in, in work, the workplace application. Um, so we, in addition to number identification, we've also added a manual greeting trigger. So you can see here, I've created two, um, I've created two greetings that are manual greetings. You know, one I called the confidentiality disclaimer and one payment due. 
And so during a call, I can just press press these buttons and these will play out uh, automatically for me uh, when, when required. So that's a nice, nice, um, a nice feature. And we're also adding this concept of collected digits. So based on the collected digits from an IVR during the call, you can also drive a specific reading. Okay, here's a view on Windows in terms of changing my skills and accessing my greetings. So um, again, very simple. So we've added, in addition to the Q stats, which is you'll see at the upper right, it's a very simple you know, name of the VDN and then the time in queue and number of, number of users in the queue. Uh, with, um, with view stats, it's a much more flexible um, where you have, um, you know, a number of free agents, number of logged in agents. It's a flexible way that you can define kind of the format and the data data that you want to show in that display and then have that show up. So this is, you know, commonly used on phones or other applications like One X Agent or Agent for Desktop. You may be very familiar with this, uh, but basically you can see the number of agents in different, in different states like not ready or after call work and so on. So um, if you're familiar with using this, you know we do now have both the Q stats and the view stats available within the within the workplace uh, work, workplace application. And Service Observe again. So I, I talked about what Service Observe is um, in in the 3.28 a few releases back. We basically added the ability to click on a contact or a search result and initiate the um, uh, initiate the uh, the service observe from from that as such as a convenience for you. And again, many of these things are based on customer feedback. Customers have told us, hey, this would be, wouldn't, wouldn't it be a better way to do things? So we've been, been adding those things or providing those enhancements. Uh, we also, in 328, provided this new home screen layout for, for media-only clients or for some cases where you don't really need to be doing a lot of work with the application. It could also be in the concept, con context of some of the some of our virtual desktop support where there's an application that's really just providing audio and then the user is really using another application for a lot of their uh, user experience and interaction. All right, and I talked a bit about that agent, uh, agent status or agent presence, right? So if you're using presence in your environment, you're probably familiar with seeing people, you can see when they're on a call, when they're available, when they're in a do not disturb state and so on. We basically taken this to publish the agent specific presence and 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 the notes into the presence system so that other people that are watching you that have you on their buddy list or in the contact list they can actually see uh, your state in, in terms of whether you're whether you're on an agent call whether you're in after contact work if you're not ready and so on so there's actually the ability to tell that a user's logged in as an agent and, and available to take calls or just not logged in as an agent but just logged in as a regular calling user. And so all this is visible from your contact list when you enable this feature. Okay, um, I wanted to show you as well a, a future item. Oh, actually, this is a, this is being delivered uh, this week. We're, we're delivering a 3.32 release, which includes this concept of an internal browser. So we already supported with screen pops popping an application or launching an application with different parameters to drive different functionality or dropping a, a launching a browser, an external browser. The difference about this internal browser, it's actually a little bit more glued to the application. So you can see that uh, it can be docked right to the application. It's actually part of the, of the workplace windows um, or set of windows. Um, but more importantly, there's actually the ability to have uh, call controls in that tab. So if I had an incoming call, and I launched the internal browser um, with, with an application. I'm just showing a simple test application here, but you could imagine this could be like something like your um, um, customer, customer relationship management application. At the bottom, we actually have call controls where you can mute the call, uh, put the call on hold or end the call and, and a call timer information as well. So right from within the browser now, you could basically have everything you need to do to manage that call and work with it. So it's giving us, a little bit more power. Uh, it's a, it's another tool in the toolkit, and I think over time we'll see how, um, how this can be extended and actually be, be much more useful for different use cases. And again, so this is available on Windows with the release uh, 3.32, which is which is basically coming uh, coming out this week uh, later this week. So we do have a very flexible screen pop definition. Again, uh, you can see here that there's lots of parameters that you can provide, things like the name of the calling party, the number of the calling party, digits that were passed while they were um, while they were calling into the IVR, 
uh, the VDN name, user-to-user uh, -user information, UCID, lots of different parameters that you can use um, to identify the user and then get to an application or a web page with unique information that you would need for that user, like their order status or their customer record or their patient record, things like that. And we've built a web-based screen pop administration tool. So this will basically create the, the definitions that you would use to configure the application uh, from this web-based uh, web tool. Okay, so I'm not gonna read through each of these, but they're, they're available kind of for your reference. We have been evolving with the workplace application, um, you know, generally between uh, every six to eight weeks a new release. And now we don't expect our enterprise customers to pick up releases that frequently, but um, that is the cadence that we're working at. We're basically trying to deliver relatively small releases uh, to, um, you know, to limit having a lot of complex, complex changes in, in a big sort of annual release or something like that. So we're delivering smaller chunks of functionality, but more frequently we're, we are on about a two month cadence now. Um, I would encourage you to, if you're using the application, again, don't expect people to be updating every two months, but you do want to, you do want to remain current um, so that you can take advantage of the latest, um, you know, quality improvements, fixes, and features, and things like that. So again, um, uh, just on the screen here, going back into the last couple of years, we added the uh, customized ringtones. We added these, um, you know, icons. If you don't have photos for contacts, you can see the kind of the initials and the colored uh, colored contact bubbles um, moving forward into last year up until early, early well, uh, through most of last year here. Visual voicemail was a big uh, feature that we developed. You can see here that the Windows application is really getting the most content. I mean, we do have a lot of heavy duty um, enterprise um, and really sort of mission critical voice use on, on Windows where people are, I would say more than, in some cases more than on other platforms really depending on the application for the business. That's not to say we don't have, you know, customers including, you know, hospitals and healthcare organizations that are really running their operation on the mobile apps and depending on that as well. But there's been, um, you know, a lot of content uh, coming for, for Windows uh, and then so somewhat less for the mobile Mac and the mobile applications. Um, now, just looking at the most recent updates, uh, bringing us right up into to where we are sort of now. Um, we have the, have the home screen layout. Um, I, I mentioned this manual manual trigger for the greetings. Um, we've got uh, other feedback, basically improving the, you know, experience um, for agent calls based on uh, based on customer feedback. So lot, lots of great customer feedback as this has been out in the field and being uh, used more widely uh, by customers. Um, we're getting great feedback on. Um, how to make improvements and, and delivering those uh, enhancements into the application. The International Avaya User Group is a volunteer-led organization for customers by customers. IAUG boasts a community of over 16,000 members and is home to educated Avaya users that utilize our community to form valuable connections, work together to increase efficiency, and get the most of their Avaya solutions. IAUG has many offerings including technical webcasts, forums for solution discussions, and discounts on Avaya Learning. IAUG, in partnership with Avaya, hosts an annual three-day conference that features over 3,000 attendees, 100-plus sessions, and opportunities to meet other technology professionals. To learn more about IAUG, visit us at iaug.org today. So now I want to kind of change gears and talk a little bit about best practices. Um, so I think, uh, you know, I've, I've tried to, to sort of uh, think about what I would recommend, uh, you know, based on working with customers over the years. Um, there is um, a, a very key document, um, you know, we do have a user guide, but, but in addition to that, we have something called the Planning and Admin Guide. And it basically talks about concepts, features, uh, configuration parameters. So there's so much um, capability within the app, things that you can turn on, things that you can you know, enable or disable, uh, ways that you can use the app that, that give you, you know, lots of um, you know, control and capability, um, and, so, and in, including things like hiding unwanted features, either during installation or during the configuration. So this, this guide, I think, is critical. I'd really recommend that people take a look at it. It has a search functionality. It's a web-based uh, uh, guide. 
And so if there's any topic or any concept that you want to think about, um, you could just use the search functionality. Um, but it does have so much information uh, that's very, very valuable. Even um, even just to read through the guide, it will it will expose you to things that you may not knew, may have not known about in terms of what the app can do, things that you might want to think about uh, for your envir environment and your uh, your deployment. Another another best practice would be to use something called a, a via Aura device services. This is really a part of the Aura architecture, and I mean, and I am talking very much focused on Aura today with this session. Um, you know, it provides contacts, favorites, directory search, uh, advanced auto configuration, so that you can have configurations for everybody, for different device types, for different groups of users, and right down to the individual level. And it also provides an advanced sign-on and single sign-on, so that instead of using your SIP extension and password to log into the app, you can use your, you know, your enterprise credentials, your Windows credentials, and you can even use uh, OAuth and SAML. So that's kind of like a, a very modern web-based sign-on, which is very popular, and that really decouples the single the application authentication from our app, and it, it would work with whatever you're using across the applications. Uh, in your environment and supporting things like multi-factor authentication with, uh, um, you know, with one-time password tokens and, and dongles and things like that. So it's very, um, there's a lot of capability there, but AADS is really highly recommended. Definitely a best practice to use that as part of your deployment. Um, you know, for people that just try start trying to use the app, you know, um, for the first time, they may have issues with things like uh, security and certificates, right? And so as another best practice is really to distribute the required certificates using auto configuration and AADS. So rather than having to push them out to the device or have users install certificates so that they can make the, make the required secure connections, is that use the auto configuration set, uh, service to push the certificates out uh, to the, um, the, the applications themselves. <clears throat> and you'd want to use a public CA to sign your AADS server certificate because AADS is where um, the app is getting its configuration. So there's kind of a chicken and egg problem there. How do you bootstrap to get the configuration if you don't have the certificate to trust your AADS server? And, and the recommendation there is to use a public CA so that your devices and your operating systems, they already know how to trust that server because the, because the, um, the public CA certs are built in. And then definitely make sure you're thinking about a process for certificate renewal. Um, you know, often in the past, we've had very long time frames, you know, two, three plus years for certificate uh, renewal or expiry. And the trend is really making that interval shorter. So you want to make sure you've got a good process, uh, automated process for certificate renewal. The next, next best practice, if you've ever used Workplace, you can see that one of the ways that you can provision the application and get it configured is by putting in your email address. And it's kind of a default that we've had in the past where you put your email address in, it would discover where to get the configuration from. But on both desktop and mobile, you can skip that discovery step and, and skip prompting the user for their email address by pre-provisioning the auto configuration URL, though it's typically your AADS auto configuration URL. Um, at the, either at install time or through group policy on, on Windows or through something like uh, use of a mobile device management system to pre-populate the configuration URLs on the mobile platforms. Um, I would also recommend that you use the button module on Windows. So we've introduced the button module as a way to, um, as an alternative way to the feature manager to deliver um, effectively what you have as feature buttons on a desk phone. Uh, and the, the button module now has many more features um, and so it's really kind of surpassed the feature manager in terms of what it can do. And I, I would think, you know, it's it's not easy for us to change the default because we don't want to disrupt what people have already on their desktops. But I would recommend for any new deployment or even an existing deployment, you look at the button module and what you can do with it and uh, have it, use that as a preferred alternative to the feature manager. Uh, another best practice, this is kind of a small thing, but, you know, um, if you're using other applications, you know, we have customers that are using things like uh, Zoom for meetings or Microsoft Teams or, or even Skype for Business, that if you're using a headset, um, often multiple apps, including Workplace and these other applications have built in support for call control with the headset. So when you answer a call or you press a button, it might be answering a call or ending a call. And as well, it might be synchronizing with the mute. And so specifically the mute synchronization can be a privacy issue if you're on a call and you're on mute, uh, if you're on a meeting, say with, for example, with Zoom, and you were to un uh, be muted, and then you answered a call on Workplace, 
And when you answer the call in the workplace, you'd be unmuting your microphone and there's a chance that you're actually unmuted into the meeting. So there are ways to avoid this by using um, you know, applications from the vendors, uh, you know, like uh, Plantronics uh, Hub or Jabra Direct to make sure that you can set your preferred cell phone to avoid this kind of conflicts. But that's another thing that I would suggest you keep, keep in mind. Uh, so the next one is, I think, is also very important. So depending on your risk tolerance, um, I, you, you re really may want to consider locking down application updates and qualifying new releases of the application and operating system changes, right, from, from vendors like Apple and, and so on. Um, now, again, this really does depend on how you're using the application, but we do have customers that are using the app to really run their business. They're very dependent on the business and any kind of disruption uh, is going to impact their business. So you, you can use various op options to lock down app to updates. Uh, of course, with Mac and, and Windows, you're able to control the pace because you're pushing those applications out. Um, but with the mobile apps, uh, if, you, if you just take the default approach, the applications are updating automatically on the App Store. Um, and we, we definitely do our best to, to ensure uh, backwards compatibility and to make sure that the App Store auto updates work smoothly. But again, if you've got a high risk tolerance uh, or you really can't tolerate any impact of um, you know, service outage or any, any unforeseen issues, then lock down the app updates, make sure you qualify the new releases and then control when they go out into your environment. Um, and so somewhat related to that, but also very important is to sign up for e-notifications so that you're in the loop on important updates and changes. So I, I strongly recommend this. Um, uh, you know, when there are changes to uh, uh, um, the operating system or security policies from Apple or Google, uh, even just to know when a new application is coming out and what are the features or if there are important, um, you know, issues that we know about and, and correction or corrections or fixes for those issues, the way that we communicate with you is through the e-notifications. So you can sign up. I've got a screenshot later, but you can sign up on the support page uh, to, to um, subscribe to those for different products. And, you know, Workplace is one of those examples of an app that, um, especially on the mobile apps, you know, you, you may not be controlling when they're coming to you. So, um, so it'd be you know really best to um, you know be in the loop in terms of when when the new releases are coming and what the changes are. Okay, so briefly, I'm just I wanted to show you this comparison. This is this is quite up to date. Uh, I just uh, updated it in the last week or so. Basically, Workplace for Windows has you know for at least from this view a very good uh, you know um, compatibility or you know feature parity with Agent for Desktop. Uh, and uh, and one X agent. So effectively, you know, all, almost all these features, with the exception of uh, the number one is H323 support. So why would you continue to use one X agent or agent for desktop if your use if your users are configured as H323 users and you're not able to change that in the short term? Then you really do need to keep using one X agent or agent for desktop. Um, so that that's that's very important to understand. Uh, we are working on adding. Uh, support for virtual desktops with Workplace uh, for Windows platform devices. But when it comes to Linux uh, devices, um, currently with agent support, if you're using a Linux thin client, you know, and, the, and there are a number of them out there, agent for desktop does support that use case, and we don't have a short-term alternative with Workplace on Linux. So those are, um, those are two of the key areas. I'll talk a little bit about v using Workplace as a VDI controlled endpoint because that's something that's coming up on the short-term roadmap that at least on the Windows platform where we are planning to support. So again, uh, you know, very good compatibility here for the, from the most part, users are able to, to move uh, from these other applications to work, Workplace and um, um, you know, have the capabilities and features that they're used to. So talk, I've talked a little bit about virtual desktop. I mean, it's important for many of our customers where they're actually delivering their application desktop suite from a virtual a virtual uh, desktop from a server. And it comes into the end user device through an application like Citrix or, or VMware Horizon uh, or, you know, or Microsoft's uh, Azure vir vir Windows virtual desktop. But basically um, in this model, we always wanna separate the audio, the, the application voice traffic from the virtual uh, data center and virtual networking. So we don't want to have any of the audio for your, your, your calling happening, being processed in the virtual PC or the virtual desktop or running over the network traffic. So you can see that in this case, we've got two applications that are connecting to session manager um, or through the session border controller and are basically um, 
coordinating. The user is really looking at the application on the right, which in this case I'm showing as Workplace, and they're controlling another application that's kind of in the background of just handling the audio. So today that would typically be agent for desktop for a contact center. Um, we are adding Workplace support for the Windows platform. Uh, and so um, maybe I'll just jump ahead and talk about that. Uh, but this is really fundamental. We always recommend uh, this kind of architecture where you have a media bypass for the application in a virtual when you're using virtual desktops. Um, so our plan is in release uh, 3.33. This is coming out in, in March. Uh, we'll have the first phase of um, Workplace being able to be controlled uh, by another instance of Workplace for both CC and UC features uh, with paired sign-on from the Workplace running in the virtual desktop. So with Citrix, VMware, and Microsoft Azure, Windows Virtual Desktop, you'll be able to sign in onto the virtual desktop and it'll automatically sign you into the app that's kind of running in the background on, on your Windows laptop. Uh, we can also push the configure URL uh, from the controlling app and also remotely control your device selection, like your headset selection, which microphone and speakers are you using. So a lot of improvements there to make this more seamless um, and um, that will be supported on, again, Workplace for Windows uh, in, in this coming release. Maybe I'll just mention again some small uh, user experience improvements. We are bringing out a dark mode across the different uh, platforms. I believe Windows will be coming first. Part of that is uh, just a lot of these platforms have a concept of a dark mode, but for some people it's becoming as a request for accessibility and better contrast. So there are people that have um, you know visual impairments where they would, to, to them to be able to see black text on a white background is better than um, white text on a black text on a white background. So basically having that all inverted con contrast and color scheme is, is much better for, for readability. Um, we're introducing a secure call indicator, again, across all the different platforms. Um, I think in the next release, you'll also see this um, user presence, missed call information, and error message indication in the taskbar um, and, and the system tray. So this was a, a request that came from customers that, you know, when the app is minimized or you're doing something else with other apps, it would be good to be able to see things like your present status, and, and especially if you've got missed calls, like to basically just give you a badge and say that you've got, you know, you've missed three calls and you can see that in the, in the taskbar. So happy to be bringing that out as an enhancement. Um, another thing that we're doing is custom feature button labels. Uh, that's also out in the release, I believe this week uh, for customers. Um, we've had some customers with that are not satisfied with the default translation of some of the feature button labels. So they're able to adjust those with that, that feature and, and, and configuration. Okay, so next, taking a look at the roadmap, um, I think I've talked about some of this stuff. Uh, we're continuing to focus on manage manageability with MDM enhancements and some interesting things going on there to help with managing mobile devices. Uh, we have a number of customers looking for looking to do deployments and projects where they'd like to have greater manageability. Accessibility continues to be um, something that we're working on. I've talked about the secure call indicator. Uh, really, workplace as a controlled endpoint um, for VDI is is very important. Uh, we're also introducing a cellular callback feature um, where, uh, where typically with uh, CES client and implement services, we would have this ability to have the system call you back. Uh, there's now going to be a native feature on Communication Manager to drive this cellular callback feature. So you won't need CES to do that. And so that basically brings us to the point where all the features of CES, if you're familiar with that, are now available directly through things like visual voicemail, on a biomessaging, ADS providing contacts and, um, and favorites and search. And now with the cellular callback, we have kind of all the features that we used to provide with CES available natively in the architecture. Um, so then we see some additional enhancements. And again, we're very much driven by customer, uh, customer enhancements, uh, driving the uh, kind of the roadmap and features. So this is a bit of a preview of what's coming uh, in, in the future. Uh, and and um, we'll continue to um, you know, update this and add this as we get additional uh, requests from, from customers coming in um, on the roadmap. Again, um, I, I will just, another plug for the planning admin guide. I think it's very important. Um, there's the URL. Uh, you can export it as a PDF. You can use the search functionality. Um, I would just really, really recommend that if you're involved in workplace uh, in deploying it, um, uh, you know, even if you have um, a service provider or a, a partner or a VIA managing a cloud deployment for you, it really makes sense for you to understand kind of the features in depth and what the capabilities are, so you can you know, be be very savvy about what you know what's possible with the application. 
uh, e-notifications. So if you go to the support site down at the bottom, you can set e-notification and you can manage your e-notifications. Make sure that you select product support notices for work for workplace. Um, and, you know, so then you'll be basically in the loop on uh, on those, what's coming up next in terms of the application releases. I'll also mention again the video tutorials. These are available, um, you know, at no cost. You've got really nice little bite-sized, typically two minutes or less, modules for each of the different um, uh, things you can do, including the agent functionality, right? So how to transfer a call, you know, how do you, you know, how to um, how to use Service Observe, for example, um, all these basic tasks. Um, and so, you know, you can use these from within the app. You can also access access them from outside the app and use them as a, a training a vehicle for your users. Okay, so um, it's about quarter quarter to the hour. Um, I finished with the, the formal content here, and I do I think what we'll do now is I'll just I'll try and go through. There are a few questions that people have, uh, and I'll try my best to go through and, and answer some of the questions um, starting from from the very beginning. Uh, so just bear with me as I kind of um, take a look and see what we can do with the questions here. So the first question is, does workplace support centralized configuration via ACA, ACM or AADS, similar to one agent, where you can pre-populate first certain fields, lockdown settings, um, and provide shared contact lists? So yes, for the most part, um, we, workplace does not work with ACM. It works with AADS, and it absolutely can, vi can provide very comprehensive configuration, lockdown settings, and lockdown the app. Um, we don't currently have a shared contact list, but this is something that a feature that um, uh, I, I expect would make sense as an enhancement. Uh, it keep, com comes up from time to time about how to do a shared contact list, so that's something I think we need to we need to look at. Uh, so thank you for that question. Uh, can the contact view be removed or hidden? Um, the contact view. Uh, the contact view itself, if you're talking about the contact tab in the app, is cannot be um, removed. So um, that's a, that's a simple answer. I mean, even if you're not, you can basically disable things like Outlook contacts, so it's not trying to go in and consume your Outlook contacts. But we always have the contacts that are shared between your different SIP devices, like you know between your J100 desk phone and and other applications. So that's kind of considered to be a core feature. Um, the contact view. I, hopefully, I've understood the question right. But that's uh, that's something that is. Um, is always uh, the view is always available. There's not an option to do a warm transfer in workplace, but you can do that on a desk phone. Okay, so I, I, you know, for this, I think I'd recommend that you look at those video tutorials because you can do both a blind transfer and a consultative transfer in workplace. Uh, and so, um, and and it's really just a question of how you do it. And there's actually multiple ways that you can do it. You can actually do it through dragging and dropping. Um, a, a, a one call onto another, so you can make a second call, talk to that person, and then drag the call appearances onto each other. You can, um, you know, you can you can also invoke the um, merge from uh, from a menu on the call appearance. So there's actually multiple ways that you can do a consultative or a warm transfer. I'd suggest you take a look at the video tutorials or the user guide to see um, uh, see how that works. Okay, what kind of license is required? So in general, for the UC functionality, um, the workplace licensing across the different platforms is provided by a UC bundle, a suite, like a core or power license that you would typically consume with a subscription. Um, the agent license uh, is the, the agent features on mobile are not um, that do not require an additional feature license. On Windows, the agent features do require a feature license. That license is typically available already in your subscription bundle if you're using CC Elite and you have the basic CC Elite um, VoIP agent bundle. That will give you entitlements to 1X agent, to agent for desktop, to workplace, and, and so on. And so you've got that entitlement. If you're already using 1X agent or agent for desktop, there is a material code or an order code from Avaya that basically is a zero dollar, zero cost material code or product that you can order to trade in or swap your 1X agent or your AAFD advanced licenses to workplace agent licenses. So for the most part, um, people are able to get the workplace agent features without really any additional incremental cost, but there is a an a la carte if you're on perpetual licensing um, and you, um, you're you not on subscription, then basically there is a, and, you, and you're not trading in something else, then there is basically an a la carte a product, a product number or, or part code that you can order. Uh, to get the, uh, the the license available, so that was I think handling um, 
um, a couple people asked the question about licensing. You need to have a license enabled. You need to have the button module enabled. You need to have the agent features enabled. So there's configuration parameters that are documented in that planning and admin guide to make sure that you can turn the feature on. And you, you won't see the agent functionality unless you meet all the requirements to turn that on, including having your set type set to a CC set type, like a, like a SIP CC set type. Uh, and then you also need to have the required buttons like agent log on and, and, and things like that. So there's a set of requirements documented in the planning admin guide that you will need to make sure you can get the agent features. And then I think I've covered the licensing question. Is there a switch for the installer to force a single user install? Um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure I quite understand what that means. The application is generally installed by default into program files, but you can override that and, and install it into a user um, user directory, right? So, it, um, and I, I'm not, I, maybe the question is really, can you do that from the command line? So I think I'd have to follow up on that one. Uh, maybe um, uh, I'm gonna put in here, Maybe we're capturing these questions, so let's follow up uh, with my um, put my email address in here. But basically, uh, I can check. I, I'm pretty sure that you can use the standard MSI command line parameters to force the application direct to install into the user uh, directory as opposed to a system directory, which would make it a make it a single user install. What's the best way to ask for enhancements or fixes in the application? Well, we have a process. Um, it's called the GRIP process. Really work with your partner, your um, your sales partner, or your Avaya account team, and they'll be able to help you in terms of providing fixes and application. Uh, I mean, that would be for enhancements. For fixes, really the simple, any kind of fix would be to just open a case, open a support case with Avaya. Uh, you'll get a support request number, and then that, that will go through the process. Uh, does it support using ADFS OAuth for login? Yes, we do support multiple different styles of OAuth, um, including ADFS and um, Azure and uh, you know many many different IDPs for um, for for that type of uh, SAML based OAuth based login. Um, we'll be be sent a copy of the recording. I'll I'll leave that to um, uh, to, to Jenny to comment at the end. But I, I I think that you'll have access to the recording and the the presentation materials. Um, enable the button module and CC features needs any kind of additional license. Okay, so we talked about licensing. Uh, so clearly I should have added a slide about like licensing. Uh, will screen pops work without an, without an IVR? Yeah, absolutely. So screen pops are basically uh, popping up an application or a web page, and then optionally providing parameters in there, uh, like you know the the caller name or number, so that that application can show something interesting for that particular call. So you don't need an IVR for that. When should the Avaya IP office and and the SEMA customers expect to see this functionality with the Workplace app? Uh, well, okay, so this, this I've really been talking about Workplace for Aura with Contact Center Elite. And so Contact Center Elite is really baked right into Aura and Communication Manager, right? So this is really about the Aura solution. Um, the, there's no uh, native Contact Center uh, support for IP Office built into Workplace. And I don't believe, um, I'm not sure that there's any roadmap to deliver that. Um, so that would be a question um, that we can follow up on. I mean, we'd want to take that to our you know, my colleagues on the IP office team to ask them about the approaches for um, for that. But in the, at the current current time frame, I don't believe there's any plans to provide this kind of um, built-in contact center functionality into the Workplace app if you're using it with IP office. Any plans for Workplace agent to support AACC instead of AAD? Okay, I think this is mean, means what about Workplace agent instead of supporting contact center elite to support a via or a contact center um, there's no there are no plans for that i mean we do have workspaces that supports um a aacc and you can use workplace as a um as a media client with aacc um, but it's not in there's no in, intention to have it replace the call control of the via aura agent desktop which is i think the question that, that you're asking jay so so no no plans for that i uh, will workplace support DES at some point. DES. Okay, well, DES is, if I understand correctly uh, this question, DES is really about provisioning uh, phones, right? So you, you get a phone or you get a, a, a you know a pallet full of phones, and there's a way that they can all, all be sort of pre-provisioned with uh, information so that they can get configured uh, out of the box. Uh, it's a very different s solution from ADS and configuring a software application. So 
Uh, DES and AADS are, are two different, you know, solutions. One for hard phones uh, and the way they work, you know, with things like a MAC address or a serial number, and then AADS for uh, user-based configuration of a soft client. So, so no plans to converge those. In my mind, they're very different applications. And if we want to follow up and talk about that more, and maybe I'm misunderstanding where you're coming from, we can talk about that. It seems like when a button feature is changed or added, you need to log out and back in. Um, well, you shouldn't, you don't necessarily need to. Um, there's basically an event that updates the application when there's a new button that's provisioned, and that may take some time. Um, and in some cases, you may need to log out and log in. But, uh, you know, in general, um, there should be a refresh, especially with the button modules, where you would see the new feature, um, you know, pop up automatically. Now, it might take it might take 10 minutes or 30 minutes or 60 minutes, depending on your system. But in general, that's the way it should work. Uh, and worst case, yeah, the other user would need to log out and log back in. But I'm not aware that that's, that's really a requirement, uh, in, in generally speaking. Uh, yep, we can share the presentation. Uh, is there an option to disable password storage? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> what is the command in the settings file? Well, there's a, there's a, a, a parameter that's something like... Um, remember passwords or password storage, enable password storage. But if you want to disable password storage in the application, you can actually do that. And you can find the parameter in the uh, planning and admin guide. Does Android require push notifications like Apple? Oh, this is a good, good question. With Apple, if you don't know, we really do require push notifications. Apple made some changes last year that uh, effectively mean you need to enable the push notification feature on, on Session Manager with Aura or IP Office to make sure that you get reliable call deliveries. Uh, Android does not require it, and Android does not seem to be as sensitive. Android continues to let the app run in the background, but we ha have added support for push notification for Android. I would recommend that you turn it on. I mean, I would recommend always using push notifications uh, with the mobile clients to get the most reliable call, call to delivery, right? There's, there's lots of things that can happen, like you can move from one network to the other, and without push notifications, you can, you can be missing calls. So the push notifications is the best way to get reliable call delivery. Are there any plans to support a Linux operating system? So not in the short term, but you know, I mentioned Agent for Desktop is kind of our answer for Linux-based platforms. So we are um, investigating the idea of providing a workplace for Linux in the future. So we don't have any plans right now, but I think that would be a great, uh, great way to round out the portfolio and simplify the portfolio. So we are investigating that, and I would say stay tuned. Potentially in the future, we could make that happen. Can you use the desktop, mobile, and desk phone simultaneously, or do you need to log out on one order to use one to use another device? That's a great question. You know, with SIP, we have this thing called MDA, multiple device access. So you can actually use up to 10 different devices or soft clients at the same time. They'll all ring at the same time. You can answer a call in one, you can move a call from one to the other. So it's a very powerful feature. So unlike H323, you're not limited to one soft client at a time. You can have up to 10 uh, devices or clients. I noticed the limit call button on the expansion module. What is the feature magic behind the button? Well, limit calls is a feature that lets you basically, if you're on a call, um, change your change your extension from being like a multi-line extension where a new call will come in to being like a one-line extension where another call that comes in is is either forced to go to voicemail or or you know would go busy. And so there's certain um, environments or places where people work where they 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 want to focus on that call. They don't want to have multiple calls coming in, and they have the ability to limit the num the number of concurrent calls to just one. And that that feature button lets them just turn that on or off as they as they desire. Where do you get the video tutorials? The video tutorials are available from the um, the online the online help. So if you go into the gear menu and you go to support, you'll be able to access the the video tutorials. Okay, I've asked, I've, I've talked about push notifications. Is there better instructions on how to configure the text file? Um, well, the, the, the workplace uh, planning and admin guide, I think, is the best place. There are sample configuration files, and there's in detailed information on all the different parameters. Uh, another question about Linux. Oh, I've already answered that one. Um, okay. Um, we're running out of time and we're running out of questions. Uh, can you talk about getting the recording? So again, I'll leave that to the end. Are we able to control workplace using workplace features when using a J175 179 phone? Yeah, workplace supports desk phone mode, so you can um, you can control a J179 phone. Um, yeah, so that's absolutely true. 
Uh, when will Workplace for Mac support agent features and abilities? Uh, I would just say I'd like to see that in the future, but we don't have a committed time frame for that. Sorry, I'm sorry I can't provide an, ESTA, an ETA for that, but it's something that uh, customers are looking for, and I'm, I'm, I've asked my team to look into some creative ways in terms of how we can do that. Um, can a supervisor use view stats and their queue stats to manage their agents? Yes, they can. In fact, I believe you don't you don't need to be even logged in as an agent. You can just be a supervisor and still have those capabilities for view stats and queue stats. Okay. So um, any plans to integrate Teams for Presence? Um, I, I, um, teams for Presence is is a bit of a challenge, but there's some ideas that we're looking at um, to to do that. So I think stay tuned. Uh, where can we sign up for the notifications? Uh, on the support site at the bottom, there's an e-notifications link. So uh, people keep ask, adding more questions, but I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up there. I really want to thank you for your time, uh, interest in this topic. Uh, please reach out to me um, if, you, uh, if you're if looking for more information. Uh, and again, I want to thank the community for all your support. Uh, for our, We have partners here that are helping um, you know sell and support and deploy the product. We've got customers, very valuable. So thanks again for your time and, um, and um, interested in this topic. Let me turn it back to you, uh, Jenny. Thank you, Brad, for taking the time to speak with us today. Um, as a reminder, this web webinar was recorded and it will be a available on demand for your viewing. You will receive an email with the link of the recording within the next 24 hours. Um, to continue discussions like this and access more technical conversations and resources, we encourage you to visit our website at iug.org and check out the IAUG product councils. IAUG councils meet monthly and provide members a forum to hear from Avaya and discuss current technical topic re topics relevant to our members. Um, in addition, Avaya Engage 2023 registration is now open. We are still accepting speaker applications, so please submit your session before deadline on February 3rd. Please make sure to complete the short evaluation that will pop up as you exit the webinar. And from all of us at IUG, thank you and have a great rest of the day.